Now, I like finding ways of keeping those pesky clients out of our WordPress dashboard. And one of the easiest ways is to create front end dashboards that allows you to lock down what they can and can't edit, keeping them out of the back end. Always a good thing. Well, my secret tool for doing this and making it super quick and easy is WS Form Pro. I've created videos on this, and I'll link those down in the description down below so you can check those out. But they've released a new feature called Option Management. It's an add-on that goes as part of WS Form Pro. I want to show you how you can use this to easily customize and have options pages you can use throughout your site. Now, options pages have lots of uses, and I'm going to show you a basic example, but also going to show you a quite nifty little way in which you can use this to create custom banners that you can let your users edit on the front end while keeping out the dashboard. But that's just scratching the surface. Let's take a look at how this all works, and I'll show you how to get everything set up. First things first, you're going to need to make sure you've got WS Form Pro installed and activated, and also the WS Form Pro option management add-on. Not so easy to say. So once you've got those installed, you'll have the options you need. I've also set up a couple of basic things inside Advanced Custom Fields, and you can use ACF Pro. You do need Pro because the options pages come with that, or you can use Metabox. I'm sure that other options will be available in the near future, but those are the two that are actually available right now. So if we come into ACF and we go into our options pages, you'll see I've created two options pages. One's called Company Details, which is a kind of global catch-all for things like address, company name, phone number, social media, those kinds of things, and a notification banner, which we'll take a look at in the second part of this video. Timestamps down below if you want to check it out. So if we come into the field groups, I've also created some meta field groups and associate those with those two options pages. So for example, company details has the company name, address, email, and so on, and a repeater for our company socials with three fields inside there for the social icon, name, and the URL. If we come back into our field groups, I've also got one for notification banner settings, and we've got the banner notification, URL, color, and whether it's active or not. So we've got some options all set up and connected up to our custom options pages. Now let's come into WS Form and add a new form in. So because we've got that options management plugin installed, we have a new tab called option management. Click, and then we've got some pre-built templates that we can use. And you'll see what this is doing is it allows us to create blank eyes with all of these different templates and create custom. But it'll also look at what we have set up. So there's our company details and our notification banner all ready for us. And there's also theme settings, which is part of whenever you've got a theme installed with WordPress, this kind of connects up and you've got options you can connect inside there. This isn't something I've created. This is a native WordPress function. So let's go into our company details and say, use this template. That's now going to go and take a look at the form elements that we've got as part of the options. It will then create the form for us and do a few other things. So after a few moments, you can see there's our form created. And inside there, we've got all the fields that we need. Now, you may be thinking, great, has this just created the form? Or has it done anything else? Well, the good news is, and this is the reason why I like this, this is my secret webman, it's mapped all of those fields to the relevant data for us. We haven't had to do any of that. Let me show you. If we jump over into the action section and open up our option management, which is our action, you see inside there, the source is company details, which is our options page. Underneath, you'll see we've got field mapping. Now, we don't have any standard WordPress fields inside your options pages don't work that way. So there's nothing to show there. But underneath, this is the ACF field mapping. All of it has been done for us. If we click and open this up, you can see this shows us exactly what's connected to the company details, company name. Come into the email, for example, company details, company email. All set up and mapped. All the actions are set up inside you. This works both ways. So if we change something inside the actual dashboard, our clients can see this on the front end and vice versa. It's seamlessly done for us. Plus, there's also some security handled here as well. You can see it tells us at the top, there's a little note that only people with the manage options capability will be able to do anything with this form. So even if someone can log in and see this form, unless they've got those options, they can't make any changes or do anything to it. Now, if you want to add an additional layer of security on top of that, because generally only administrators have the manage options capability, but let's say you've created some custom roles and you want to lock things down a little further, you can do that as well. So if we come over into our form settings and into limit, 
scroll down, you can see we've got this. This is the user status, so they have a role or capability. And currently, they have to have that manage options capability. But let's say we want to lock that down to make sure it's only administrators that have manage options. Click on there, choose administrator. We've now added a second level of security into this form. Simple as that. And then we can just save this. And let's take a preview of it. And inside there, you can see there's all the basic normal text fields. And underneath, we also have the repeater region for our icon, social name, and URL. And we can add another one in, and we can keep on doing this. So we can allow them to add in as many social media icons and details as they want. And then we can create a custom loop inside our templates to pull that data in. So that's a really simple example. Let's now take a look at another one, which is probably a little bit more useful in certain respects, because this is kind of like a set it and forget it and connect it up, like I say, with normal dynamic data inside whatever builder you're using. Bricks in my example, but it could be Elementor or anything else. Now, let's say we want to use that banner option. So let's do the same thing again. Let's come out of this, go and add a new form in. This time we're going to come into Options Management and say the Notification Banner and use that one. So again, all the same things have been done. All the mapping has been done for us and the security things we put into place. Everything is set up. Let's preview this. And as you can see, everything is inside you. It's also pulled in the data from where I've been testing this out. So you can see it's pulled in my banner notification, the link, the color, which we can choose from here, and also whether the banner is active or not. Hit submit, you get the idea. So let's make sure this is published and available. So we could publish this. Now what we can do is we can easily create a custom page, put some security on that page, and show the form. So let's say, for example, we come into our pages, add a new page. We'll call this one, hit publish. We'll edit this with bricks. You don't need bricks. You can use whatever you want. You can use Gutenberg, whatever it is you want to use. I just want to show you in bricks because this is the tool that I use. Okay, so you'll see there's our little test at the top, our little banner. I'll show you how to handle that in a moment. But let's say we want to add a new section in. We'll apply a little bit of spacing to the top of this. We'll also come in and set a background color. And then we'll go and search for WS form. And we'll add our form in. Select our form. Come to content, and from there, we're going to say the notification banner. Cool. There's our form inserted in for us. Let's quickly set that to 100% width. There we go. So we now have our form element set up. If we save this and preview it, you can see there's our form inserted into our design. Easy set this. We say the banner is active. You see there's no banner at the top at this point in time. We'll hit submit. That's successfully updated. And after it reloads, you can see there's our banner at the top because we've activated it. Want to change the text over, change the color, hit submit, and there you go. You can see things have changed. Now, you can make this as comprehensive as you want. Images, background colors, text colors, all those kinds of things, and then map them to the relevant fields in whatever tool you're using. So let's see now how we can set this banner up to show or hide based upon these options. So we're going to come to our Bricks templates. We're going to come down to our header. And I've already gone and taken all the previous example out, and we're going to create that from scratch. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in a new container, position that where we want, and rename it. We'll call it banner for this example. And inside there, we're simply going to drop in some text. We'll keep it simple, but again, like I say, you can go as far as you want with this. Drop in some basic text. Cool. Select our banner. Give it a class. Call it header banner. Cool. So now what we can do is we can come into our styling and add a little bit of spacing around this. We'll just add a little bit of padding just so you can see it looking nice and neat. So it's not like a complete mess. And also add a little bit of margin at the bottom. There we go. So now we've set that up. We now obviously need to map in the dynamic data. So we'll grab our basic text, come over to content, take out what's inside here, use our dynamic data and jump into ACF. And what we need to do is find the ACF data that has that information. So there's our banner, banner notification. Click on that. There we go. That's pulling the text. You can see that's showing exactly as we want. Now we want to set the background color to this. We'll select our banner, select our heading, come over to style and background. And from there, we'll click our background color. We're going to come down to raw. And once we do that, you can see that opens up the option for dynamic data. So we'll click and open that up. 
And again, what we're going to do is find that banner color. So there's our banner background color. Boom, select that. That's pulled in our color. Simple as that. So now we've set the content. Now we just need to set up the ability to show and hide this based upon the on off switch that we've got created. To do that, all we're going to do is make sure our banner uh, is selected, come over into conditions, add a new condition in, open up and scroll down until we find dynamic data. Click on the data dynamic data option. Again, we want to find that notification options. There's our banner active. Select it. We'll say this is equal to, and we're going to say true, and we'll hit save. So as long as that switch is on and it's referring, basically bringing back true, it will show the banner. If it's turned off, it'll show false and therefore won't show the banner. So let's test it. So coming back into our test page, you can see. Our banner is currently set as inactive. Let's change the color just to make sure that everything is correct. So there we go. We'll say banner active and hit submit. We reload and you can see there is our banner active. Disable it, simple as that. So it is as simple as that. We now can easily create these front end options for our clients. You can get creative with this and give them access to various different functions, enable, disable those functions using controls like this. A little bit of ingenuity goes an awful long way, and I'm sure you could create some amazing things for your clients. And if you want to learn more about how you use WS Forms to create a front end dashboard, I've already created a course for this. You can find out more information here and a link in the description down below. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.